it's that long-term, short-term balance at the end of the day. It's do you really have a vision of really where you are, what your current struggles are, and what you're trying to become when you grow up? If you don't have that, and the hardest part of not having that sometimes is that the CEO and an early stage founder isn't equipped to actually come up with that idea anymore because their initial idea was the baby, you know, and they yeah. made the baby grow and then they don't really recognize it anymore. It sort of outstrips where they were thinking or their vision is. And I bumped into a bunch of founders over time that can explain how they had to take themselves out of the equation. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> Sometimes, especially when, you know, VC is involved in things like that, you know, because they can kind of see outside. In. When you want to get your market balance right, you, know, you really need that CPO structure. And I mean, through the whole company, right? So then you got to make sure your design matches. You need that structure. And the most important thing is balance. At the end of the day, balance wins. It's the balance thing that really matters. So at the end of the day, if you can't stay balanced, you can't stay upright, you can't compete. And so when your balance shifts too far to the other, and that's why really when you talk about structure, it's like CPO, your head or chief of marketing and sales, right? That's really your true business balancers. And then those roles have to run down throughout the company to support the actual operating model itself or the economic decision-making cycle, right? More importantly, that part of your operating model, really how you ultimately kind of go concept to cash and make the type of decisions you really make. Because if those long-term, short-term, because they're different, right? Marketing's long, sales is short typically, and CPO is both long and short, right? They're synthesizing. So if you don't have that structure kind of running down inside of your inside of your company, at least at the front end of your economic decision-making cycle, you're going to chase a lot of shadows. You're going to get really, really, really unbalanced. And I think that's the trick is finding the right people with the right skills at that level to be able to play those mm. two types of roles. And I think that's why two startups struggle too, because it's like, it's hard to, for one person or two people to necessarily think long and short mm. at the same time. 100%. The systems are easy, but the people are more complicated. I'd love to hear more about that because yeah, I'm certain you've been brought into organizations where you realize that you're finding that the, the folks are struggling because they're at an inflection point where they need to learn a whole new set of skills that they don't have and they may not know it. You may be the one to have to share that with them. I think a lot of times we overemphasize skills and we underemphasize experience. Mm-hmm. You know, because people with a wide range of experiences can usually learn skills more rapidly than people that just have skills but don't actually have a lot of varied experience. And I've always looked for science to back this idea up. So, like, if it sounds scientific, it's only because I imagine it to be, and I can be mild, mildly convincing. But like, I've never seen any any. I've looked for it to sort of back that up, and I don't know. I don't know if it exists. But in my experience, that's actually the case. So, what happens then when you kind of go in and you find, well, somebody has been in the role for twenty some years and has kind of like made their way up within two companies and they've been in this one for 20 years or whatever else, something like that. And you look and you say, do you really have the experience to be able to actually take a rapidly learn this skill set? Because mm-hmm. you're like, oh, it's your natural intelligence. So they're smart enough to be able to do it. It's like, well, there's a lot of smart people that could do academic things relatively well. But like, can you learn this and actually process all the angles as you're learning this? Because it's almost like I'm learning to be a five-tool baseball pitcher at the same time when I have like one pitch and I'm pitching every four days and I've got to keep my contract. You know, it's like in the last year of my contract where they only gave me a one-year tryout. It's like, it's a lot of pressure and it's hard. Yeah. So some people can't do that. And that's the difficult part when nobody likes to talk about, you know, when people talk about things like displacement, maybe they're better in a lower role and you have to kind of put somebody else into place. This is when it kind of comes back and it's very important to have like a really strong or develop one if they're not there. And sometimes clients won't do it. They're just like, they know where it's going to go. And they just sort of like avoid the whole thing. But that's where you have to come back and actually have a real, actual, pointable workforce strategy that points back to your actual future state. You know, that long-term roadmap you're supposed to have, like who you want to be when you kind of grow up and it's not all features on a Gantt chart. There's ideas there too. When you look at that, you know, that's when that sort of, when those two things match up and you've got that workforce strategy and that, then you've likely already got a semblance of growth that's sort of occurring. If you don't have that magic matchup, then you probably have people that have been in and running around the same parking lot most of their lives. And they're just, they're just not going to have, they're not going to have any outside the neighborhood type of type of experience. And that's the tough part. That's when you kind of have to come in and say, what does this really look like? So, you know, part of it is like getting people to realize this anyway, really quickly is that kind of going in and saying, do you, and this sounds so, it's so boring and so basic, but it is, it's like the place to start. Like, do you really have your roles defined? Yeah. Like the accountability and the ownerships and things like that. And it's like not just the roles. And then across for teaming, do you have the complementary aspects of your roles defined? Because that's the balancer. 
right? That we were kind of talking about, like in, across the workforce. It's like, you have these things. And if you don't, getting them to be able to do that for certain roles in certain places can then often unlock their willingness to start looking at it on a larger scale. Because like, oh, I get why nobody's accountable. It's because the roles aren't designed to be cross accountable. It's like, yeah, maybe that's the thing, you know? I think getting in there and, and doing those types of activities from a consulting point of view can re really open up the right perspective to kind of do it at large. Because almost no organization I've ever run into has that from the yeah. start. And you can attribute a lot of problems to, to just missing that one.